every time when you create a cocktail for someone, you just put your soul in it, and yeah, you create something that just for that person, especially, and he's gonna leave the place with a good memory. Uh, this is like our industry. Hello and welcome to Best Sips Worldwide. I'm your drinking companion, Susan Schwartz, an American travel writer living in London. Thanks to my mother's love of martinis, the first words I spoke were shaken, not stirred, and I've been obsessed by the history of cocktails ever since. Through the years, I've been lucky enough to sip some of the best made by the best. Hear that sound? It's time to cozy up to the bar and let me introduce you to the movers and shakers of the world's most famous watering holes. I was lucky to chat with our next guest, Adrian Pudlashak, before he left Bucharest for a tiny island in Norway where only beer is sold. His story is full of surprises and took a bit of prying to reveal. Thank goodness I found the key to opening him up, as he has one of the most eclectic backgrounds of anyone I have interviewed. All right. I grew up in uh, in Bucharest, in Romania. Uh, I didn't have anything with hospitality for a long time, and then I just start like everybody else, doing bartending as a summer time or just for fun. And then um, I just uh, go to Hard Rock Cafe. Hard Rock Cafe in Bucharest was my lunching. Uh, How old were you when you started? Twenty-nine. I'm 36 no, no, before, now. before Hard Rock Cafe. Yes, yes, went, So the first bar, you were but, 29. Yes. So what were you doing before that? Um, I don't know, everything else, electricity. I was an electrician for two years, uh, construction, traveling around the world. I work in a farm. So this uh, job comes like... So, but these, a farm obviously not in Bucharest. Where was your no, farm? in England. Oh, in England? Yes, in <laughs> Stafford. <laughs> Stafford, how did you get there? Uh, I don't know. Just for friends here, just they they go there to work, and I said for six months it's just a life experience. I like to experience a lot of things in my life, and yeah, England was one of those countries. So what were you doing on the farm? Uh, picking strawberries, raspberries, something like that. Can you still eat them, or are you sick yes, of them now? Yes. Are you still? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a gourmand. <laughs> <laughs> so it's perfect. Yeah. yeah, and then I will start bartending at 29. And, uh, so you, wait, wait, you're going way too fast. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you're in London, or not you're in, you're in Stafford, no. and then you came back. I came back and I started bartending. And you in started a bartending. You were 29. In a nightclub. You, how come you decided, I'm going to bartend? Did you just think um, it was the easiest no. way to make some cash? Or? Um, yeah, and just to have some fun. And right. met some, because in the bar we met, we met a lot of people. And also this is a way to, to meet people from around the world. All right. So this is one my my main. When you were living in Lond- uh, in Stafford, was that the first time you had traveled abroad? Uh, no, my first time was in two thousand and two, when I used to work in Italy in Rome, for three years. And what were you doing there? <laughs> See? Electrician. You were an electrician in Italy. Yeah. And do you speak Italian? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are, is your, any of your family members Italian? No. No, but you no, just picked I it just up. start learning there. Like, mm-hmm. I go now in Norway. And so what did you think about Rome? Ah, it's amazing. It's mm-hmm. an amazing city. And now I discover the, the bars in Rome, cocktail bars, which has, are amazing and good bartenders. In Italy are the best bartenders now. <laughs> uh, the, the English would fight you for that one. <laughs> <laughs> of course. In, anyway, in London mm-hmm. is the mainstream of uh, bartending around the world. But in London there are um, bartenders from around the world, not from... Only for me. And England. a lot of Italians. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So you were going to cocktail bars while you were in Rome? Uh, no. No. I didn't have any idea about cocktails. All right, all right. <laughs> so you were just doing electricity. Yeah. But and loving living in Rome. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then you came back to Bucharest? Yeah. And then you okay. went to London? And when, uh, yeah, I went to London after a while. I, I went to London actually to do a school, EBS, European Bartending School. And I did the school there, and then I stayed for a while just to catch everything from the, the other good bartenders from London. 
And this was after staff, staff, yes, uh, Stratford? Yes, yes. Yes, it was after Stratford. So we come after... back to Bucharest. <laughs> Everyone's going to be very confused, but it's fine. That's come back fun. from Italy in Bucharest, and then uh, I go to England in Stafford, and then I come back to Bucharest. And that's when and you started with them? Back, then you no, 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 wait. Oh, boy. <laughs> come back in Basingstoke, live there for working in a pub, Premier Inn, come back to Romania, and then... Uh, Another city in England I used to work in uh, Silverstone, where is the Formula One track? And I used to work in in that hotel near to Silverstone, and then I go to London. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and from London, after London, I I went to Edinburgh. So what were you doing in London? Uh, I used to work in Soho in a lab bar. Oh, you were in lab bar. Yeah. Now it's closed. Just just closed. Yeah. Mm. It's so what was that experience like? Amazing. It was the best experience in my life. I was uh, learning a lot from the other bartenders in a short time. How long were you there? For one year. And how did, what did you start? What was your role? Were you already a bartender then? Uh, yes. I have some experience in, here in Romania. And then I go to the school and then they learn me a lot more that I used to know. And uh, then I just grew up with the other bartenders around me and the other, I don't know, uh, how do you say, seminars. What do you think you learned at lab that changed things? Um, I, uh, I learned about the synergy of drinks, uh, how to use the drinks in a cocktail. Not too much, not too less or... So the spirits themselves. Exactly. Just, you have to know your spirit with you work with. And after that, um, we have a lot of, of ingredients that you put in, in like, uh, I don't know, uh, ingredients like anason or fresh anason or fresh basil, coriander. Uh, I used to play with this uh, kind of, how do you say it? Herbs, uh, I guess. Herbs, yeah. herbs or something. And I learned a lot from the, those boys. And this was the primary thing that uh, I go there to learn this. And it was uh, amazing. Otherwise, and the nightlife is very interesting there in London. It's like every day you learn something new. Uh, Especially right there. Yeah. <laughs> every, every bar you go is not like... Uh, here uh, is not a good drink. Everywhere it's a good drink in, in London. And yeah, it was an amazing experience. After that, Scotland, pff, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Were you working? Did, so, how, wait, how did you get back? How did you get to Scotland? Uh, I had a friend, I had a friend in, in London, a Romanian friend, bartender as well. And we said, mm, let's go to Scotland to see how it is. We go for a ride for two days, and then we decided to come back to work for a couple of months to see how Scottish people are and so, oh. what kind of drinks they're made in. Mm -hmm. And Edinburgh it's, yeah, is the best, I think, city in Scotland with cocktail bars. Even if it's small, has like 5,100 people. Right. Did you start using more whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> and I went to a distillery. I went to Glen Kinche Distillery and I visited. And yeah, there in Scotland it's amazing that every customer's know a lot about whiskey, more than a lot of bartenders from here. So this, oh, is, the, this is the easiest way to interact with people because there is always a common subject that you can talk with. And yeah, this is, was an amazing experience with them. So why did you leave Edinburgh then? Um, because uh, I was missing home. Mm. I was from time to time, even if I'm traveling, I come back here and it's my place where to, I don't know, met all my friends, my family, and then i just charging with their spirit, and then I go away again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is a way that I'm going to move to Norway. Wait, so after, <laughs> you just want to just go so fast. Yeah. <laughs> there's lots of, there's lots here. Um, after Edinburgh, After, was that when you moved back? Yeah, I moved back to Romania. Mm -hmm. And um, I started working uh, in this um, in a nightclub for a while. And then I was a manager in a theater. But when you were working at the nightclub, 
did you want to bring everything that you had learned from London of and course, Edinburgh of course. to the nightclub? It was a nightclub, uh, an English nightclub. In Brugrest? Yes, like karaoke and something. And it was easier for me to give them what I learned because they are English people, are open-minded, are more open to, to drinks, like in Romania. And yeah, it was more easy to give them what I learned in, in England. And I do best cocktails and they, they like it because not all, always here you can find a good cocktail like in London. Even we don't have uh, the same spirits like there, different kind of spirits. And yeah, it was much easier for me. Did you use those spirits to try and recreate uh, what you had learned? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Here, yeah. If I, I just find a similar spirit that is not here but it's in England. And also you can create a lot of good, good drinks. And um, yeah, especially with uh, egg white. Here people are not so uh, used to drink uh, cocktails with egg white. The it's flip. Like, yeah, it's like a raw egg white. How can you drink it? If you combine it with lemon juice, with something spirit and something else, and when you shake it, the egg white creates a foam. And that foam is so amazing that play with it. So do you feel that you have to educate a lot of the drinkers? Oh, yeah. Here? Yes. Mm. Uh, we need to do that in Romania and all over the place. I Are think. they receptive to...? Uh, depends. <laughs> sometimes yes, sometimes not. You know, sometimes there are customers that are coming uh, in your bar and they said, I want this, I want rum and coke, for example. And I said, do you want to try something else with rum, if you like rum, just to go beyond <laughs> your borders? And there are people that are said, no, 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 I want that. Mm-hmm. And they are not going further. And this is difficult with these people, but there is their choice. But some have said yes. Yeah, of course. Uh-huh. And then they, got, they have a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, every time when you create a cocktail for someone, you just put your soul in it. And, yeah, you create something that just for that person, especially. And he left, he's going to leave the place with a good memory. And this is like our industry. We like to, to not to take people to, how do you say, just... Make people, people? Yeah, make people happy when, you, when they come in your bar. Mm-hmm. They are coming maybe not so happy, but you try to make them more happy than, than before. Than when they... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, when you, you said you were, you hinted that you said you were going to Norway. Yes. I'm going to go there just for leave the bartending away, I suppose, for farming a bit. So back to farming? <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I will just try to know better um, the, um, the basil. I will just want to grow my basil, my mint, uh, the rhubarb. That I'm going to go there. We have a lot of, I don't know, there are some yellow flowers growing on that island. And maybe we can do some liquor with that. So where, so, what island are you going to, and why did you decide <laughs> on Norway? My brother lives there on that island for What's two the years island now. What's the island called? Vairoi. Okay. It's north of uh, Norway, 4,000 kilometers from Bucharest to there. And it's a small island, only 700 people on, living on that island. Are you going to try and convert them away from rum and coke? <laughs> <laughs> I think they, they don't drink alcohol on that island. Oh, boy. They, uh, there is only one store and they sell only beer. They don't have booze. No wonder you, <laughs> no, no wonder you want to make the alcohols out of yes, all of these. Yes, things. but they have a lot of flowers there growing. And yes, you can do something with those flowers. Maybe a bitter, maybe a, an oil or something. So those things are a part of my bartending. But not like here. And what does your brother do there? Uh, yeah, he He's a just farmer? yeah he grows these things. He do his own garden, and he try to make it better and better. And how long do you think you're gonna be there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I decided to go in two days. I mean, two days ago you decided you're gonna go. No, I mean, oh, no, I, I I go to my brother on the island. I spoke with them. And the next day I said, let's move, move out here. 
And that was it. And I come back here leaving? in two weeks, three weeks. You know, it's going to be really nice and summery there. Then it's going to get really, really it's, cold. It's sun 24 hours a day. All right. There is no night in this part of... Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it will be amazing. It will be an incredible experience. Yes. Do you think you're going to feel that pull of Bucharest to bring you back? Uh, yeah, but not now. Not yet. For sure, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm, I want to move there for a while and just take a break from the big cities. Well, I feel this is like a part one. Like, we're, huh? we're fe- like this is a part one interview. And then in a year, we need to come back <laughs> and visit okay. you in Norway. Okay. All right? Yeah. And see what you've made oh, from course. those drinks. But I, you know, all I've heard about your cocktails and the way you make and your history, I really need a drink right now. Okay. So can we go to the bar yes. and make one? Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> I will miss not knowing exactly where Adrian is, but if you're headed to a tiny Norwegian island, ask around and see if he's behind a bar somewhere. He did leave us with a cocktail of the week that he created for his former bar Magellan's at the Mansion Hotel in Bucharest. Called this simply clever, it's a flip, so get those egg whites ready. You'll need 40 ml of Finlandia grapefruit vodka, 20 ml of Bowles elderflower liqueur, another 20 ml of fresh lemon juice, 10 ml of simple sugar syrup, and three dashes of rhubarb bitters. Combine all these ingredients in a shaker and shake with ice. Then pour the ingredients into another shaker without the ice. Then add the 20 ml of egg whites and shake again to get that foam we find in a flip. Pour it all into a cocktail glass, and then garnish with a few drops of bitters. For more of where to drink while in Bucharest, check out my blog post on bestbitsworldwide.com. London's Dalston is filling up with bars, but there is only one raise. Dave Miller, the spiritual guru behind this iconic bar, is our guest for this 50th episode of Best Sips Podcast. Come and celebrate with us next week. Until next time, Bottoms Up. For more information and links to everything you've heard about, plus a bit more, please visit bestbitsworldwide.com. Thanks for listening to Best Sips Worldwide, a spinoff of Best Bits Worldwide. Always remember the wise words of Oscar Wilde, all things in moderation, including moderation. And never drink and drive. Okay, I said that last part. Theme music is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. You'll find me at the bar. <laughs>